I'm a woman in my 60s and I just installed a Toso mini split air conditioner. Fellas, come on. What are you waiting on? Once you receive your mini split, one of the most important things I have found through experience is you want to take the unit out of the box and you'll want to inspect it very closely because you want to make certain it didn't get damaged in shipment. And once you've determined that everything is a-okay, then grab that owner's manual, grab the parts that came in the box, lay the parts all out in eyesight, and you want to check the parts section against what you can visually see to make certain that you have everything that you're supposed to have before you move forward. Step one is to find an appropriate install location. Okay, I'm ready to install the indoor unit. Now this is called the evaporator. I've left the packaging on because we have to lay it on its front so we can access the back panel. The reason why we have to roll it over to have access to the back is because this right here, this is the mounting bracket and we remove this. The other thing that we need access to is these lines here go to the outside of the unit to the condenser and this here, this is our drainage line. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to first remove the mounting plate because we're going to have to attach this to the wall because it acts like a cleat and it's going to allow us to rest our evaporator right on this mounting plate. To remove the mounting bracket or plate there's just one screw, it's right there in the center and we're going to just remove this screw right here. The bracket will just lift out of the back and now we're ready to install it. I'm attaching my unit to a wooden wall, but if you have drywall, you're going to want to use a stud finder to locate the studs so that when you screw the mounting plate in, you're attaching to something solid. What I'll do is I'm going to take a level here and I'm going to place it on top and then I'll level it up once it's leveled, like it is right now, that's level, now it's time for me to drive my screw. Now once you hit the stud, feel free to drive additional screws in. Our bracket is now securely attached to the wall. Okay, so I've turned it back on its back. Now let's take the plastic off of this, open the front of the unit, because what we have to do is we have to attach the signal wire and we do that from inside. Now what we want to do is we're going to slide right over because this is the wiring cover plate and we want to remove that. So I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver and I'm just going to remove this cover and then underneath it is the terminal block and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And we're going to lift this cover plate off and that reveals the terminal block. That's what that is there. Okay, what we have here is the signal cable. That's what this looks like. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our signal cable here, we're gonna fish it through the back to the front. We're in the front now. This right here, that's a strain relief. But we're gonna need to remove that to give ourselves a little wiggle room. Now a strain relief, it holds wires securely so they don't pull out. Now we'll reinstall that once we fish our wire through. Now with the strain relief removed, it'll make it easy for us to fish it to the back to the front and then make our connections. If you notice, we've got our U-type lugs here. That's what these are called and we're going to attach to the appropriate terminals. Okay, we've come around to the back side of the unit. I want to show you exactly where you need to fish that signal cable through. You want to go to the top of the unit where my hand is. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to point directly to the route you want to take. We're going to take our cable and we're going to fish it right through here. So here we go. I'm going to fish my signal cable through. I'm going to help tug it through with the ground wire, and there we go. Okay, I'm gonna rest this on its uh, back so we can make our connections. Now we're ready to connect our U lugs, that's what these are, to our terminal block. Don't be intimidated by the wiring because they provide a diagram for you to follow. And you just have to match the colored wires to the correct labels on the terminal block. It's easy peasy. Now once you've attached all your wires, replace the cover 
and screw it down firmly. It's time to move on to our refrigerant lines. Now if you follow my hand here, we come across the refrigerant lines. That's what these are. I'm going to take an open-ended wrench like this. I'm going to place it right on this nut because what I have to do is I have to remove these plastic caps. I'm able to twist that off by hand. Now if you hear a little air, don't worry about it. That's absolutely normal. So there we go. This one I can just remove by hand. It just screws off very easily. There we go. Okay, it's time for us to join our lines together. We've got the lines that are attached to the evaporator, and then we have the lines that we're going to fish through the wall to the outside. Now we have to join the two together, and to do that, we have to remove these yellow caps. So let me do that right now. Let me just remove these yellow caps. It's not too much to it. You just use a flathead screwdriver to wedge those things off. And that's it, folks. Now let's join the two together. Large line to large line, small line to small line. So let's start with our small line first. Now these copper lines, they're, they're rigid, so you may have to just bend it just a little bit to get it going in the direction that you want so that it lines up well and you don't cross thread. Now once you've made secure connections here, take the signal cable and what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the three together and make a nice tight package. Now don't be afraid to pull this away from the unit to give yourself some room because what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the cable with the tape that is provided in the kit. So collect it, collect all three cables, make a nice little tight package because we're going to have to fish this through the, through the wall. So you want a nice tight uh, grouping. Now keep in mind that this tape it's not tacky and you have to really think of it like bicycle handlebar tape. It just it it sticks to itself. Once you get to the drainage line, which is almost at the end of the evaporator, you're going to have to incorporate your drainage line into this package. Now once you've incorporated the drainage holes into your bundle and you get close to the end like we are, it's time to attach this. Now what this is, is it's a drainage hose extension. Now you don't have to thread it into place, you just have to push the connection. Then you want to continue to wrap your bundle. Okay, so we've got the entire length wrapped. We've made the decision to exit out the back side of our indoor unit. Now, what I want to tell you is this. You don't have to exit out the back of the unit. There are a couple knockouts at either end, uh, so you have to determine what's best for you. We're exiting from the back on the left-hand side. Now it's time for us to drill our hole through the wall so we can feed the cable from the inside to the outside compressor. Now to do that, we need a bit long enough to drill not only through the interior wall, but all the way through the exterior wall. I'm gonna use a paddle bit, then I'm gonna follow up with a hole saw that's gonna create an opening large enough to feed the cable through. Now keep in mind when you're drilling with that hole saw, tip that drill downwards as you drill from the inside out. And then when you're drilling from the outside in, you got to tip the drill upwards. That's going to allow water to drain freely through the drain hose. Okay, we're on the exterior now, so I got to pull it through. Now this is where you're going to need a second pair of hands, somebody to help you feed the line through the wall and to help you hold the evaporator in place while you mount it. This gum sealer that's provided in the package, we use this to close up the gaps that are around the cable coming out of the wall. And then we take an escooch in, we'll slide that up in the place, cover up the gum sealer, and it'll give it a nice finished look. 
When selecting a site for the compressor, you want to make certain that it has a lot of airflow surrounding it. I'm attaching my compressor to a concrete slab and I'm using concrete screws. Now you can use a sleeve anchors if you'd like. Um, I've selected the concrete screws because I find that they're easiest to uh, install. I like to use a hammer drill to drill the holes for the concrete screws because I, I find that it makes quick work of it. Next, I attach the compressor to the concrete. I want you to remember this. We wrapped the cables and the drainage line inside here tightly so we could feed it to the wall. But now we got to free up that drainage line because we don't want it draining inside with the cables. Take a utility knife, making certain that I, I don't cut the cable. There we go. So there's our drainage line. And what we're going to do is we're going to snip this so that it, it drains out. The drainage line is pointed toward the pavement and now can flow freely. Now it's time to connect the refrigerant pipe and the signal wire to the outdoor unit. So let's take off the cover plates to both the valves and to the terminal block. When you're ready to attach the coolant lines, I want you to notice that they're different sizes and so are the valves. So you can't mix the two up. Take off the caps to the coolant lines and then thread those lines onto the valve. Now you want to tighten those connections. I'm using an adjustable wrench. The manual does, however, suggest an open-ended torque wrench. Now it's time to, for us to attach our signal wire. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to match the wire color with the labels on the terminal block. Now just follow this diagram here. I'm going to attach our wires and then I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, we're in the home stretch. I've installed the inside and the outside unit. Now what I've got to do is, well, I've got to power it up. And to do that, I have to run a dedicated circuit on a 20 amp double pole breaker. And what that means is I've got to bring power over from the breaker panel to an emergency shutoff that sits on an exterior wall near the compressor. And then from that emergency shutoff, I'll be running power over to the compressor. I'm not an electrician, but I'm very confident in my skills. But this is where you have to really evaluate your skills. You have to determine whether or not you feel comfortable doing electrical work. And if you don't, then you need to, well, be safe and bring in an electrician to do this stage of the install. Okay, now we're in the home stretch here. What you're looking at is you're looking at a gauge and down here is the vacuum pump. We have to do something called vacate the line. And what that means is there's, there's air that builds up in the line and some, sometimes debris and you gotta pull that out of there before you circulate the refrigerant. And this gauge and this pump allow you to do it. Now, it doesn't come with the unit. I'll place a link in the description below to the gauge and the pump. Now the next thing you need that doesn't come with the unit is this part right here. What it is, is a charging vacuum port adapter. And it's gonna help you with the process of vacating the line. I'll place a link in the description below to this part as well. To begin the process of vacating the line, we connect the charging hose of the manifold gauge to the refrigerant charging vent of the gas valve. You wanna make certain that the high pressure here is closed, all right? Turn on the low pressure valve, like that. So I'm opening it up, it's on. And now, well, we've gotta go down here to our vacuum pump and hit the switch and turn it on. Now this is what you're looking for. You wanna make certain that the gauge remains at minus 0.1. You don't want it to fluctuate. You don't want it to go high or low. You just want it to remain steady. You wanna make certain that you run the vacuum pump for 10 to 15 minutes. I ran it for 15 minutes just to make certain. Now it's time to turn the vacuum pump off. But before we do that, we have to close the low pressure valve. 
Now I'm going to turn off the pump. Now you need to wait five minutes because you want to make certain that there's no change in the pressure. Now if there's no change in pressure, go ahead and remove the manifold gauge. Remove both valve caps, this one here and this one down here. Now with the Allen wrench, what you want to do is you want to open the valve core of the liquid valve and the gas valve completely by turning clockwise. Now it's always a good idea, even though you may not hear air escaping, but to check for leaks anyway. And you do that with a little soapy water. Just, you know, squirt a little soapy water on the joint there. And if you see bubbles, then you know, well, you've got a leak. If you don't see any bubbles, you know you're good to go. Okay, let's hit the remote. Well, let's, there we go. That's nice. It's definitely blowing cold air. And it's gonna be nice to have air conditioning in the shop. I'm gonna place a link in the description below to this unit so you can check it out for yourself. And if you wanna see more videos like this, just click here. This is Leah saying you can do this. See you next time.